Hello everyone and welcome! I know that a lot of you asked me to talk about Jin, but I can't do that yet. Not before we talk about Shen and Z. It all started in Kinko Monastery in Ionia. Z was an orphan that was taken in by a great ninja master called Great Master Ku Shou. Only one other student was able to match Z's skills, Ku Shou's son, Shen. Shen and Z together became the most powerful students in the entire monastery. Even at their young age, they were sent out on elite missions as a team under the lead of Ku Shou. One of these missions was tracking down the infamous Golden Demon. The Golden Demon was a criminal very well known for leaving brutally humiliated corpses behind. After investigating these horrific crimes for four long years, all three of them were changed. Kusho's red hair turned white, Shen's sense of humor disappeared and Zed began to struggle with his studies. Fortunately, Kusho finally found a pattern that led them to the criminal. In the end, it was revealed that the Golden Demon was just a stagehand in a traveling theater working under the name Kada Jin. It seemed like after all that trouble, it would all have a happy ending. But the damage was already done. When they returned to the monastery, Zed became unstable. Even after all of his training, he still wasn't able to beat Shen. Every time they clashed, it ended in a draw. Frustrated and jealous, he started looking for an advantage. He sneaked inside a sealed part of their temple, where he found an ancient box. He knew he shouldn't open it, but he looked inside nonetheless. In an instant, shadows reached out and touched Zed's mind. The gift he received was a dark knowledge of hidden techniques. The next day, he challenged Shen and this time he finally defeated him. He expected recognition in his moment of victory, but the master knew that Zed had used the forbidden ways and he banished him. Humiliated, Zed wandered Ionia for years. He didn't want the forbidden techniques to go to waste. And so, he started training other ninjas that were also interested in the style of shadows. Unfortunately, he knew that his techniques would never be perfect without the box. And so, one day he gathered up his students that were now an entire army and they marched into Kinko Monastery. When they arrived, Zed was surprised that Master Kusho welcomed them as guests. He laid his blade at Zed's feet, declaring that he had failed Zed as his master. By banishing him, he doomed Zed to the shadows instead of leading him to balance. He told Zed to follow him inside the temple, destroy the box and lead his followers to balance as well. Zed did follow him inside. Moments later, everyone outside heard Zed cry out in pain. Mysteriously, he emerged from the temple unharmed and he threw the severed head of Kusho at Shen's feet. Screaming in rage, Zed commanded his followers to slaughter Kusho's students and take the box. Though many students died, some escaped thanks to Shen's heroic efforts. With Kusho dead, Shen took his place as the leader of the Kinko Order. He took his father's spirit blade, which turned him into the Eye of Twilight. He was now forbidden from allowing passion to sway his judgment. His duty was to take care of both the human realm and the spirit realm by bringing them into a state of balance known as equilibrium. Whenever the spirits or the humans started overwhelming the other realm, Shen had to strike without mercy and push everyone back in line. 
Shen uses two different tools for his job. The Spirit Blade, which allows him to phase out into the Spirit Realm to fight the invisible creatures, and the Ionian Steel Saber, capable of splitting living beings in half with a single strike. Even though Shen walks a lonely path, he doesn't always walk alone. The mortal Shadow Warrior Akali and the Lightning Quick Yordle Kennen are always ready to assist him. Throughout the years of successful duty as the Eye of Twilight, many legends about Shen were born. Legends about fighting Seven Demon Clan in Ionia, battling the Skin Devourers from the Black Steps of Freljord, or even the story told by the Noxians themselves. Apparently one day, Shen suddenly appeared in the central court of Noxus. It seemed as if he was fighting something invisible to the onlookers. He was phasing in and out of existence so quick that no one knew what was going on. That was the day Shen saved Noxus from the evil within. One of Shen's recent travels brought him to an Ionian fishing village. A fisherman from this village told Shen that his ship was destroyed by a large monster that killed six of his men. After listening to his tale, Shen decided to investigate the shipwreck himself. Fortunately, the investigation was quickly over as he found a silver hair. Most people would overlook it, but Shen was no ordinary man. The hair dissolved into nothing at his touch, indicating that it wasn't from this world. A demon, you must have sailed into its path, Shen said. The fisherman nodded. The barrier between the two realms was very thin in Ionia. A spirit could easily wander into the mortal realm, and as the Eye of Twilight, it was Shen's duty to strike the beast down for killing six mortal beings. You need not worry, I shall have the monster before nightfall, said a voice behind Shen. Shen turned to see a holy man sent by the local temple. Few acolytes stood around him, carrying the necessary tools for a cleansing ritual. Can we count on your help, sir? The man asked. Balance will be restored. Shen answered. Shen continued tracking down the beast on his own. Soon a trail of shimmering silver hair led him to a sleeping demon with half-eaten corpses laying around him. Without a sound, Shen got closer to the demon and drew his spirit blade. Before he could ready his strike, loud ghastly screeching echoed through the air. Shen could identify the noise. He heard it many times before. These were the cries of dying spirits. The demon started waking up and Shen considered his options. After a brief moment, he clapped his hands together and disappeared into a vortex of energy. He arrived back at the shipwreck. He saw smoking pools of black ooze evaporating into the air. These were the remains of the spirits the acolytes caught. The holy man caught a small spiritual imp and tied him on a leash. Would you care to dispose of this one? The holy man asked. Shen looked at the black pools, then he looked back at the man and the imp. I'm sorry for this, your highness, he said. He put his spirit blade away and drew his steel saber instead. It wasn't the sword he had expected to use that day, but equilibrium had its rules. This is where the first part of Shen's and Zed's story cuts off. The second part will be explained in Jin's lore. So if you'd like to see more, Hang around and I will deliver it to you as soon as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, you can follow me on all the social media, comment and talk about whatever you want in the comment section and rate the video to your liking. You know I appreciate all of your support. So as always, 
Thank you, come again. Okay, once again I don't really have an outro, so instead I'll sit here and stare at you through the internet. I'm still here watching you. Don't worry, Jin's coming. But in the meantime, I'll be watching. Okay, that's it. <laughs>